So are there areas of the market that can weather any storm that lies ahead and provide returns for investors? Joining me now are David Benson, uh, Chief Investment Officer of the Benson Group, and Mark Smith, Senior Vice President, Portfolio Manager at Wells Fargo Advisors. Yeah, Mark's pointing to people coming back to work. And if that's happening, David, uh, that's got to be good for commercial real estate, right? Is that why you like Simon Property Group? Well, we've liked it for quite some time because we believe that it had the free cash flow that was going to support this really, really attractive dividend. And that if all the bad things happened, even worse than expected, they had this asset base. There was really great brick and mortar assets uh, that had way less leverage than they had back around the time of the financial crisis. So we like Simon Property as a cash flow generator. I'll add to Mark's point on energy. I think that you have great free cash flows now because you've had much better capital discipline from some of the producers, particularly Chevron, Exxon. They've been able to turn the knobs down a bit on their CapEx. They protected their dividend through 2020. Now it's a really good path ahead for those big energy companies. So, David, it it sounds like you would say that the recovery trade is not really front and center anymore. Is it back more to a look at fundamentals and, you know, where the bargains are perhaps uh, when you look at the strength of an underlying business versus where it's trading? Yeah, I think that's a good way to say it. The way we put it to clients is this. Uh, We believe that the recovery trade was priced in months and months ago. There's still room for recovery to outperform expectations, but for the most part, the easy money is gone and has been gone for some time. Right now, you're in a position where people worry about inflation, deflation. You're talking about uh, low rates are hurting markets today. A few months ago, we said higher rates are hurting markets. We want to be agnostic about that. That's why we focus on free cash flow and we focus on dividend growth because then it's, yeah, fundamentals, but it's also better companies with better operating leverage. So that free cash flow benefits us, whether Hmm. we're a withdrawer from our portfolio or we're accumulating by reinvesting dividends. David, do you have thoughts on that? Is this really more of an issue of who gets to make money at that come public moment and China wanting to bring that in-house and maybe even perhaps impose, uh, you know, do some arm twisting around the government's own access to data going forward in these companies? And then, you know, once the company's trading, it is pretty stable. Or is there a fundamental change in the value of and the safety of Chinese companies in the public markets based on what's happening here? Well, let's say it's the first thing that you said, that it has to do with China wanting to control the entry into public markets. What is the limiting principle there? See, this is the problem in doing business with the Communist Party, that the free enterprise principles cannot be assumed to be operating. It may be pragmatically that they allow it to go there, but you can't take it for granted. So that has to get priced into the risk premia. I think that's what Mark's referring to, is maybe that ends up undervaluing some of the companies. And we've all seen the returns that people have made with Alibaba and Tencent. But going forward, I think this DD thing is a big deal. I don't think there's such thing as business as usual because you have to have priced in that you cannot trust the sovereign authority that regulates the issuer. That has a lot of effect on how we treat it here in the New York Stock Exchange.